Instructional Analysis Part 1. In this short video presentation, I'm going to show you how you can do an instructional analysis. Now, I'm going to take a little bit different approach here for this presentation because when you do an instructional analysis, you don't want to think of it as some kind of an, uh, a perfect science or something that you can do exactly right because really there's no perfect way of doing this. It's not like math where you know there's an exact right answer. You want to make sure that you're thinking about this as a design tool. Okay, And when we design things, usually it's iterative, meaning it takes several attempts to do it. And also, uh, it takes a lot of thinking and, and there's no right answer to solve design problems and no right process for solving design problems. Let's go ahead then and take a look at the general pieces of an instructional analysis. Okay, So what are the parts of an instructional analysis? Well first at the top here is the instructional goal. So far in our course in IDPT 610 you've already created your instructional goal. So your next step is to do the instructional goal analysis and this is where you analyze your goal to break it down into the sequence of activities or operations and decisions that are required to actually achieve that goal. So you sort of break it down into steps, big steps. Now to go along with that is our next component, subordinate skills. So for each of those steps or components that we identified in the instructional analysis, there are usually skills, subordinate skills, or supporting skills that the learners need to learn to be able to accomplish the instructional goal uh, and accomplish the steps in the goal analysis. So these are things we have to spell out. And then finally we have our entry skills. These are things that we assume that the learner already knows how to do. So let's take a look at how this will be visually displayed in your piece of instruction. So the top of your uh, layout, you'll have your instructional goal, and that's usually placed inside a box like this. And you break down your goal with your instructional goal analysis. And you can just sort of represent each of these steps visually like this, with these four boxes going across. Again, for each of those goals, you may have subordinate skills that the learner needs to learn to be able to do those steps. So you can represent them in this way. And then finally, Below this dotted line here are the entry skills, and these are things that a learner must have already mastered before they come to the training or use your instruction. So you can represent it in this way. Now this is a very general description or general layout of how this will work, so I thought it would be worth showing you an example, first of a, a psychomotor skill. So here's our instructional goal. Team members will kick a soccer ball 20 feet with their dominant foot using soccer cleats. Let's try now to break this down using an instructional goal analysis. Now remember, it's not a perfect science. This is an iterative approach. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my pen here and just write it out visually just to give it a first try. And I recommend that you do the same thing. It's going to take several iterations, several attempts to be able to do this. So the first thing that I think that the learner needs to be able to do is, uh, and again, I'm just making this up as I go. This is my first try. Um, I, I'm going to say they need to stand, they need to be able to stand in the ready stance. So they need to be able to stand and be prepared to do their kicking. So that's our first step. So perhaps after they stand in their ready stance, uh, they need to position their lead foot. You know, you have two feet. One's the kicking foot. The other one's the lead foot, we'll call it. I'm not sure if that's what they actually call it, but that's what I'll call it. So position the lead foot. So after they position the lead foot, uh, they probably need to lean their body forward. They've got to lean their body forward, get the momentum going so that when they actually kick, it'll actually uh, move the ball 20 feet. Okay, I think the next step then is to kick the ball with the kick foot. All right. And then the last thing will be to have your leg follow through. Let's try that. And I'm going to say it's the kick leg follow through because you want the kick leg to follow through. Okay. All right. So those are our steps. Looks like we have five major steps for doing this psychomotor skill, kicking the ball. Now, once again, I just sort of brainstormed that out just now. It's not perfect yet, but I think it's a good start. So if I wanted to really get in there and find out what those steps are, there's a lot of things I could do. I could go and look online to try to see what steps people are recommending on the how-to things that are online, or I could watch some videos, or I could go watch a soccer player uh, kick a ball, or go watch a coach 
coaching soccer players on how to kick the ball. There's lots of different things that you can do to do this goal analysis. And the point is to be iterative. Show it to somebody else, get their feedback, get their ideas on how to improve it, continually improve it so that you can get to the point where you really feel like you've got it. Now let's play around for a minute with the subordinate skills analysis. And I know you don't need to do this until the next week, but it's worth going ahead with this example to show how it works. What are some of the things that these learners, these team members need to be able to do to do some of these steps? And I probably won't have space on the slide here to be able to show all of these, but let's talk about this. So stand in the ready stance. Let's talk about the subordinate skills for standing in the ready stance. So my assumption for this is that there are several different things they need to do to be in the ready stance. One of them is that they need to be, uh, they need to stand stand on the balls of their feet. So this is like standing on their toes kind of so that they're ready to go. Uh, another thing is they need to have their hands uh, at their thighs, we'll say. Okay, so I think those are some good uh, subordinate skills for standing in the ready stance. Let's see, what's another one? Well, what about positioning the lead foot? Uh, one thing they need to know, they need, they need to determine the lead foot. If they don't know which foot they're gonna kick with, then it's going to be a problem. So, uh, and in our instruction up here, we said they, they're going to kick with their dominant foot. So they, we really need to sort of have them figure out, are they left-handed? Well, maybe they might kick with their left foot or right-handed with their right foot. So they need to determine that lead foot. You know, we could go ahead and break these down even further, these subordinate skills, but we'll stop there. So these are things that they still need to learn how to do, but that they don't yet know how to do. Now, there are some skills that they already have that they need to know how to do before they come to the training. So I'm going to write my dotted line here to di differentiate between the subordinate skills and the entry skills. Okay, so for standing on the balls of your feet, well, what do they need to be able to do to do that? So we are going to assume, I'm going to say, okay, we assume that these team members can stand. Maybe stand without falling. Stand without falling. So that's a, a entry skill they just really need to have. Um, determining their lead foot. Well, maybe they need to be able to distinguish right from left. And maybe not. Maybe that's not part of it. But it seems like that could work as a, a, an entry skill. They need to know left from right. So you can see that I could continue to work through all of these for each one of these different components and come up with subordinate skills and entry skills that the learners would need to be able to do to be able to finish the uh, steps in the instructional goal and actually complete the instructional goal effectively. Again, this is part one of how to do an instructional analysis. In the next video, I'll show how I would do it for an intellectual skill.